name of Jesus Christ. Father, you have known the secret in the dark. Every unseen forces that want to go against your world this moment, I destroy them with the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Everlasting Father, every stronghold upon the life of your children, I break that stronghold in Jesus' name. Amen. Mighty God, let your word bring joy and gladness unto your people. Amen. Let your word bring healing upon the sick. Amen. Let your word bring deliverance upon the captives. Amen. Let your word bring salvation to us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout it louder. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning, by the grace of God Almighty, we want to look at the topic Covenant Keeping God. Covenant Keeping God. The God that we serve is the God that keeps covenants. To start with, covenant is an agreement between two parties. When God is dealing with man, God works with covenants. The agreement on his own part is always keeping it. But we are the one that does not keep that agreement. So when you are in the place and they said sign agreement, it's a covenant. The Bible says our God is a covenant keeping God. Right from creation, he has been dealing with man through covenant. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord has said to Abraham, from verse 1, the Lord has said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And I will cause him who causes you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In you, the covenant he made with Abraham was the foundation of blessing for us all. The question is, are we operating on that covenant? If we are operating I am operating on that covenant. There is no reason why I should lack blessings in my life. Say, in blessing, I will bless thee. In multiplying, I will multiply thee. And in you shall all the families, all the families, for the present, and the yet to be born family. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God made that covenant for your sake, for my sake, for the sake of my children. But because some of us are ignorant of that covenant that God has made, we are just suffering for no reason. When Jacob came, he renewed that same covenant with Jacob. When Isaac was born, he renewed the same covenant with him. Because he's a covenant keeping God. That was 
why we describe him as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God never failed in his own past. We as humans are the ones that fail. He's a covenant keeper. On which covenant are you operating on at this point in time? If you operate on the covenant of the Almighty God, your life should be full of blessings and joy and gladness. But if you don't operate on that covenant, That individual's life will be full of sorrow, problems, calamities. Praise the name of the Lord. First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. Verse 23. Eighteen verse twenty-three. Sorry, first Kings chapter eight, not eighteen. I'm sorry, first Kings eight. Verse twenty-three. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven, above or on earth, below like you, who keep your covenant and mercy with your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. There is no other God like you below the earth or below heaven that keep covenant with all the servants that walk with the whole of their hearts. Not all that walk with you with a perfect heart. For the covenant of God to work perfectly in our lives, our heart has to be upright. Our heart has to be clean. The Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart. For this is to what? They shall see God. Not just seeing God in the physical, but seeing God with his actions, with his works, manifesting in your life. Every child of God, every Christian, is supposed to operate on the covenant of the Almighty God. The covenant opens the doorway unto our lives. He is always acting on that covenant. Even when he introduced himself to the children of Israel, he said, I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. God, I never change. But immediately at the point, the covenant that God made began to expire. For salvation to come, for redemption to come, another covenant has to be made. Matthew 26. Matthew 26, verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread. Blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. Some versions will tell you, New and everlasting covenant. When the covenant that God made with Abraham was failing out because of the wickedness of the world, 
We need a Messiah. We need a Savior. We need a Redeemer. For the works of the Redeemer to be effective, say another covenant has to be made. That was when Christ came, he shed his blood on the cross. And he said, this is my blood. Drink all of it. For this is the new covenant. We that covenant we got connected to God. To reconcile the world unto God. The question is, are we operating on that new covenant today? I'm not talking about just having holy communion service. As a child of God, are we operating on that covenant? I'm going to force believe that Satan was once in heaven. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning. How art thou called down to the ground, which did waken, I mean, waken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high. Verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pits. He was once in heaven. He was once one of the angels in heaven. His ministry is singing. That is why you have one to find demonic agents, go to the choir. Without apology. You want to find someone from the queen, I mean, from the queen of the coast, you find them in the choir. Some of them will sing. That will come then. But if God releases his works to the mountains, huh? especially that is singing, why is it so? Because that is the ministry of the devil. That was his ministry in heaven, singing, glorifying God. In his heart, he got exalted. He wants to exalt himself above God. And God said, it cannot be. The place where you belong is hell. Take down to the earth. Do we know that some churches, when a church broke away from another church, their activities look similar. Am I going to go somewhere? When someone broke away from deeper life, their activity, their way of life will be a little bit similar to where they are coming from. When Satan was in heaven, as Lucifer, when God threw him out, there are things he copied. He knew that the way God deals with man is through covenant. God established his covenant with negotiation. Look, walk with me. This and this and this shall follow. Satan made man to walk with him with covenant, not by negotiation, but by crafty and cunning and deceitful way. He makes people to operate under a covenant based on the ignorance of the people. And some of 
Paul is not going to be going into that covenant with Satan. Praise the name of the Lord. First Samuel chapter 11. Verses 1 to 3. First Samuel 11. Verse 1 to 3. Verse 1 says, Then Nahash, the Ammonite, came up and encamped against Jabez Gilead. And all the men of Jabez said to Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we will serve you. Make a covenant with us, we will serve you. Listen, Nahash means serpent. That is the real meaning. He was a king of the Ammonites. The question is, what is the meaning of your name? We should be able to find out what it means. It could be a kind of sweet English name. Nash was a king of the Ammonites. Now there was trouble with the people of Jabez Gilead. For fear upon those people, they said, Oh, Nash, make a covenant with us, we will serve you. When you enter into unclean covenant, become a slave. God gives you an option. Walk with me this way, it shall be well with you. But if you decide not to, the choice is yours. But since I never tell you, walk with me in this pattern, it comes to you in a very deceitful and crafty way. Take a good instance in the book of Genesis chapter 3. I would say God instructed Adam and said, Of every tree in the garden you shall eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat out of it. For the day you eat, you shall show it down. Give me verse 1 of that, Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle, more cunning, more crafty, more deceitful than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yes, have God said, You shall not eat of every tree in the garden. Of every tree. Has God said? The question is, Was Satan aware of the instruction God gave to Adam and Eve? Yes, he was. How can I get man back to myself? He knew that God said, of every tree you shall eat, but this particular one at the center, thou shalt not eat out of it. The day you eat of it, you will die. But he came, he did not be point for that particular one. He said, did God really say that you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? They gave the answer and said, no. God said, we shall eat, but of this particular one, we must not eat out of it. For the day we eat out of it, That. He didn't have to put words into their mouth. A snake is crawling in the field. Will you hear this sound? You will never. If snake want to move here, they don't move straight. It's the edge that they will be moving, just at that edge. Very snaky. Very common, very crafty. Did God really say you shall not eat of it? You want to get their opinion. God did not say so. He said, the 
even we eat out of this particular one, we will die. Ah, you won't die. But only you will die. He knows that you begin to see like him. Just test it and see. He was able to capture them. And the woman being ignorant, looking at the physical, not the spiritual. Satan knew it. This God is talking about the spiritual. But he made them to have the impression that he's talking about the physical. And they had a taste of it. Ah, of the truth, we know that. Hello, honey. Who oh, comes to that they died spiritually. They realized they were naked. Let me tell you, or ask you, on what covenant are you operating at this point in time? As a Christian. Are you operating on the covenant that God has made? Or you are operating on the covenant that your father made before you came into this land? Make a covenant with us, we will serve you. Our forefathers entered into covenant, not knowing that they were enslaving not only themselves, generations to come. Ask some of us today, we say, Oh, praise God. My father is a deacon, my mother is a deacon, and so oh, all my parents are pastors. Oh, we are from a Christian family. Oh, we're baptized and confirmed in Roman Catholic Church. Baptized, confirmed, and confused. What your forefathers did years ago, the covenant that they made years ago, even before you get born, is still operating in your life today. motivated you to go to a voodoo priest, to go to a native doctor, and they will tell you to come back tomorrow. And you go. Who 
quite a night ago on the witchcraft world. I said, there is somebody that has come. Look at his problem, look at her problem, what do we do? Sometimes we tell them we are responsible for the problem that in the middle of it. We don't want you to set them free. The native daughter of the Fulu will tell the witches and say, please, for this person to know that I am powerful, just release him or her for a while. Said, okay, go and make, tell that fellow, make a decision on his or her head. Some of us are sitting down. Your father will tell you, sit down. It's God that saved many of us. This time would have finished many long ago. It will take a race of rage. Seven children put seven marks on their forehead. Seven. On their chest, seven marks. At the back, seven marks. You will get a black substance which we don't know what it contains and use it to rub it. The substance is what they brought from the witchcraft world. Jesus Christ says, my blood is the new and the everlasting covenant. Maybe that blood comes out to rub it with those black substance, sealing it up. The door has been opened. And that's why 1995% of black people, they always dream that somebody is using matches to pursue them. Because our lives have been dedicated to the devil, to that news. The dangerous thing about that evil covenant is this. Even when you've had it and your children did not partake, it continues to affect your children and grandchildren to come. It becomes generational. God, there is that dominion already from the realm of the spirit. Can I get God around God that we may serve you? What about this message to be because of one person? There was a time that people were so desperate to travel abroad. Young girls, the age of ten, traveling to Italy, traveling to Spain, desperately. In my province, or in my in the province of uh, my country where I came from, see somebody at the age of 10 years is having a very big mansion. No good education before you left home. Where is your child? He's in Europe. What is she doing? She's working. What kind of work? They give a kind of sweet stories. Doing salon business, doing head plate. Good. That is not the real story. Many of them are into prostitution. Let me tell you what they do before they leave home. There are specialists who have to take them abroad. There are many who are from Europe. And you know, if you in those days, I'm talking to you. I don't know where anyone is coming from, I'm just telling you. Before they leave, they go to a Fudu or a native doctor. Fudu priest or native said, now bring your underwear. Shave the hair in your private parts. The hair in your armpits. They will tie them and tell you a practical story. They gave it to the native doctor, they will hang it on top of a shrine. The woman that is trying to take her abroad and said, if she refuses to pay, don't release it. They will travel to Europe for prostitution. 
the hair on their private parts, the hair on their arms, in their province. But the kind of they have entered into the convent. They make incision on their head so that they will escape deportation. Not only that they have combinated with the devil. I see many of them coming from Europe, probably the ladies. Let them be in the church, they will manifest within a few weeks. When I say manifestation, they are very rebellious, very arrogant. They cannot be corrected because of what they have entered into. And which government are you operating on? Another modified way by which people enter into covenant today, the covenant with the devil. I will tell you this because I don't know where you will go tomorrow. When there is a problem, who can be so desperate? Then when it comes to the problem of child bearing, Priest and said, just in the night, tie white clothes. Is it not abnormal for a human being to put chicken on their back? They carry chicken, tie the chicken on your back, use a white cloth, just be going straight. Dead in the night, don't look back, they will go in. With chicken on the back. And they keep going, keep moving and moving and moving. If you go to the point, the chicken will disappear. Chicken has disappeared. Some weeks later, they said, I'm pregnant. Oh, oh. Nine months. Come on, my dear, Missy, hallelujah. Jehovah, daddy has done. Which Jehovah, daddy, don't you wait? They break me up. That's the same Demon. Demon possessed. Because she has entered into the convent. Sometimes I will tell them when you get to that junction in the dead of the night, there is a little pot. Three eggs are inside. Break the eggs. Mix them together. Drink them raw. Don't 
care what the consequence may be. They drink it. I thought they were saying we are pregnant. People can enter into a convent with a married kingdom. One of the ways when someone asks you to take a bath by the river. And they use a sponge to bake you. They use a kind of medicine stuff to bake you because they want to wash the problem away. When they finish with that sponge, what happens? They throw it into the river. They initiate you into the marine kingdom. Automatically, you are into the marine convent. When you tell them the fellow, this thing is not by bigger, they will tell you, oh, in the book of Kings, Elisha asked Naaman to dip himself in the river. But look at the Bible critically. The Bible did not tell us that Elisha bit the man in the river. Naaman did not even see Elisha face to face. Am I going to to rocks? Naaman did not see Elisha face to face. Elisha sent his message and said, tell him! Go to the river and dip yourself seven times. The number of people who fall victim are mostly women. Jesus healed a man with blind eyes. He said, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. Take that him, wash your face in the pool of Siloam. When those things are done, you enter into the marine kingdom. I told you that Satan never come with negotiation because in a crafty way. At the end, you come out. You say like dream and see people bathing in the river when your life is in connection with the marine kingdom. On which covenant are you operating on? Pastor, I spoke, I don't speak the tongues, praise God for your tongues, but you are operating under a demonic covenant. That tongue may not be the great tongue. You can free the tongues and under captivity. You enter into a covenant through bad relationship. If my wife remembered vividly, in particular year we're having we're having picnic at Kipling. Two little children. A boy and a girl. Very small, I mean small, I mean they are small. They did something, they brought something, they spoke on it together. They buried it inside the sand. My wife saw them when they did it. She went there and dug it out. And lo and behold, they've entered into a covenant together. They were not up to the age of 10. They are not up to the age of 10, each of them. Tomorrow they will grow up 
A begin to speak in tongues and say, Jesus, I've been telling you to What they did years ago would begin to work against them. What covenant have you entered, or did you enter in the past?
We don't have an advantage. What's the problem? I can't wait the next week. I had a dream last night. I was in the midst of people. We were not eating raw meat with blood. I joined them. I was just eating it. Ah! They have been blindfolding her for a long time. She didn't know. I didn't hear the dream. I said, you can't remember. I don't even know if I dreamt last night. I don't even think so. I can't even remember. Oh, well, praise God. I don't think it's important. It's important. If it is not important today, some days it will be important. To that young lady, it was never important. As long as she can pray, she can bind, she can lose, she can approach, she can plant. Those dreams was not important until when the day those dreams had to be important came up. She never knew she has been initiated to eating in the dream all along. Am I talking to somebody? What is a dream? Sometimes you slept and you woke up. You are in a hurry. You run up and down. Oh, I need to catch the bus. And it's more seven thirty. It's just six forty-five. I need to catch the bus quickly. Enter the shower. I have some pain here. You know. Put soap and water, it's still very hot. You go to the mirror, and there are three strokes on your body. How come I'm on this mark? Who may have done that? Who knows? Huh? Did you? Who had that? Which is? Am I going to say it? Who said it? Not me. Praise the Lord. Church. I said, evil covenant can be made through your footprints. Listen to the testimony on the YouTube. One of the members of the Boko Haram who gave his life to Christ. A young sister was inviting him to Christ when he was there. And this young man said, you don't know whom you are dealing with. That was in his heart. So you are telling me to come to church. On the first day, he followed her to church. The man of God that was ministering the program was praying for people, touching people, speaking words of God into the life of the people. 
This one of God spoke to the person beside him and moved over, spoke to the next person on the other side. He remained alone. And the congregation, the man of God did not touch him. God did not lead him to minister to him. Because they consider Christians to be pagan. Before that time, this same young man was looking for a way to destroy this girl without this girl knowing she was still inviting this young man to church. Amen. This girl was walking wholeheartedly for God. There was no sin in between. The sister never opened her nakedness for him. He went to a native doctor several times. He went to a man. Because he's a Muslim. He's a Muslim. He was a Muslim then. For them to kill this young woman. You know what they said to him? They said, just take the sand from, his, from her footprint. The sand from her footprint. Just bring it. The young girl didn't know. He took just a little of the sun from her footprint and just gave it to the native doctor. And they looked at this and they said to this young man, he said, leave this girl alone. Stay away from her. Why? He didn't give any reason. He said, this man is not serious. He went to a man. He said, he said, go and get the, the sun from her footprint. She, he must have been doing a great job. Following her past, but then he, he sees the, the footstep of a young girl. He says, Excuse me, let me just get something from the floor. I don't think. Because if he says, Let him go and come back, he cannot trace the footprint anymore. They took another sign from that footprint to the uh, man. And that one made the condition and said, That girl is a no go area. Let her go. He tried several Iman. It did not work until God arrested him. Now begin to make confession. <coughs> to go to a place, they say you have to pull your shoe. The sand is very important. And places like that, they never sweep out. They always gather the sand. I mean, the living space, I'm telling you the reality. They gather the sand together, whatever they sweep in that room or the toilet, wherever. They never sweep them away. Yeah, it's going from pillar to post. They need to say that it's not that point to reach. That's why it's difficult for some people to live. Such congregation. Because when you leave, they send incantation to you. They send problem to you. And they make you return back. Say, we don't want to go. Now you've left. There is problem. They are responsible. And that is the way native doctors operate. Native doctors, when they want to get money, they send it to the community. And you run back. Ah, Papa, look at the problem I have. My child is convulsing. Ah, this problem. They are responsible. Covenants. Don't go to a place and say, because everywhere is a touch, you go in. You get yourself into a problem. The covenant that your parents made, I think they are very six. To break that covenant. Which covenant are you operating? I'm not aware again that people refer into covenants. Sexual dreams. Sex in the dream. Sex in the dream.
When a man legally married and a woman, when they have sex for marriage purpose, for production purpose, the resting of body fluid from the man, from the woman that will form the baby in the womb. The product is the child that you see. The product of the covenant. Some of us have an affairs in the dream. Many years ago, a young man I was still in Nigeria then. Called the stepmother with knife and just stabbed the woman to death. Saw it on the news. They said, why did you do that? I said, every time this woman always have an affair with me in the dream. Two ways. It could be that woman in the recent. The devil will put on the appearance of that woman. Unfortunately, he fought that woman with the arm of flesh. Too strong. When one is having an affair in the dream, it's a connection to the marine kingdom. Some folks don't see any problem with it. Sometimes you wake up in the morning, it seems that nothing has happened. Man or woman, you come to wait. There is a covenant that has been established to their midst. Marital covenant. I'm not making another call this morning. So we're going to pray. There could be one area that will affect you in your life. It is my prayer that God will pray those covenants. Amen. Those are the things that are hatred, the blessings of God to reach in your life. I've mentioned something like this before in the past. A, a, a young lady that came to me, specifically, she came from Jamaica, and I was talking with her. Talking about the problem. And it got to this point we are talking about now. She said, No. I'm not thinking like that. Something like that is taking place in her life. The world prayer has not She never knew what in her life. And I said to her, I said, You know it is wrong. When you dream and you find yourself in the, in the river, he said, Pastor, a number of times I dream, I see whales in the river, I just moving. I play with them, they play around me. I'm telling you, reality. He said, I'll probably be in the middle of the sea. They will be moving around me, playing. Oh, you know, I was having fun. I said, fun? He said, yes. I said, I'm not seeing any problem with it. I love it. It's a woman who are going deeper. You know, in this part of the world, they, they play with mermaids. They have fun with things of mermaids. They capture the children to that means. Dora on mermaids. Your children will sit there and begin to watch. You look at it, you turn your eyes. Are you watching Dora? Ah! Good. What's my mate? A woman came to the church for deliverance. As she was coming, she brought a package of food from McDonald's. And she said, just eat your food. Why? I listen to Pastor. The first thing the child dug out from that bag was my mate. I stopped what I was doing. I said, Can I have that? I called the mother. I said, What is this? He said, Mom. From where? He said, From McDonald's. You saw it? He said, Yes, I saw it. And you are coming for deliverance. 
and you get your, your daughter married, and you are here to come and deliver yourself. Some of us who go to this, you don't bother what they give to your children. It does not matter. Someday it will matter. Marriage. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Covenant can be established. Special water every weekend. Gallon. And it says holy water. When you get to dust, you need to drink that holy water. Every weekend. And you get to such environment, it will pile up. There returns of water. No weekend. That your parents went to years ago, the Hulu priest they went to, all that they were saying, Oh my God, God have mercy upon us. Whether you 
My God is about to do something in somebody's life this moment. Your life will need to change. The reason why your level has not changed is because there is a covenant that has not been broken. Which is the area that affecting your life? Jesus, what's up, Pray and let me go. Pray and let me go. 
itu sakit cekik lapar sendiri lindoro gana ramah pasita kuli cekik kok cekik gana ramah pasita ya lipo sakit cekik ya gana ramah pasita kuli cekik kok cekik gana ramah pasita lipo ya ramah sakit cekik lapar sakit cekik rompo sendiri ya kuli cekik gana ramah pasita lapar sakit cekik gana ramah pasita lipo ya gana ramah pasita in Jesus name we pray. Let me hear you say the name of Jesus. Every covenant of poverty from my father, from my mother, walking like this man, by the blood of Jesus, packed by fire. Gana ramah pasirwa, lipo sakit kebuluwa. Gana ramah pasirwa, lipo kebuluwa sakit kebuluwa. Gana ramah pasirwa, lipo sakit 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 kebuluwa
Lord, I present your children before you right now. I speak into your life. Father, 
presented to the cross of Calvary. Whatever that is not of God, whatever that want to lay claims on this line and the last day, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let her go. 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 Go. Right now. Release her. For she is the daughter of Abraham. In the name of Jesus, I command that struggle. Break! Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, at the fire of God, right now. Your existence. Break! In the name of Jesus. Let her go by the fire of the Holy Spirit. For Christ shed his blood for this one. Whether you like it or not, you must what? Cast her. Amen. And that is the covenant of God for you and I. Present your right hand to God. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit assigned to my life. Every spirit assigned to my life. You monitoring demon assigned to my life. You monitoring demon assigned to my life. You demon on assignment assigned to my life. Demon on assignment assigned to my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Catch fire. In the name of Jesus. Catch fire. Every demon on assignment assigned to my life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, 
in the name of Jesus. I release your sons and daughters to you. Amen. By the blood of Jesus Christ, I command every covenant that has been terminated, be terminated forever in Jesus' name. Amen. In every area of your life, you shall prosper. Amen. In every area of your life, you shall prosper. Amen. In every area of your life, you shall succeed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, precious Father. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. We will be seated. God bless you mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. My beloved brothers and sisters, it could be that you are watching this program at this point in time. What is that that is taking place in your life? What kind of dreams are you suffering at this point in time? We are here to help you. Whatever you are suffering, God is in position to help you out. As you watch this program right now on YouTube, Call the numbers on your screen. 647 773 5073. 647 773 5128. Call 24 7. We are there to help you. Whatever it is the dream that you are passing through, whatever it is suffering, have you been to churches? There is no solution. Have you been to different places? They could not help you out. The Bible says, freely you give. Freely you receive, freely you shall give. Come. This is a church that God has ordained to set men free. The redeemed Christian Church of God, Mount Zion Chapel. We are located at 126 Millwick Drive, Toronto, Ontario. God bless you as you come.